Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walcheff. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. Every week we talk about our ongoing thesis and that is digital hospitality. Every business needs to be digital first and every business needs to be in the hospitality business. Part of the thing that we like to do on this podcast is find people that are playing the game within the game. How do brands become media companies? How do businesses become media companies? Today, we are going to teach you how and why you listening to this podcast need to launch your own podcast. I have one of the best in the business, Mason Bendigo of Breathing Air Podcast. I was a guest on his show. Can't believe it was two years ago, but him and I have kept in touch digitally. It's part of the digital hospitality communication. And I always love the content that he is putting out in the world. And I'm honored uh, to have him on the show to, to share all the secrets that he knows um, that he believes in that that drives him out of bed every morning to uh, to to live the life that he's he's building for himself. Mason, what up? Sean, thank you so much for having me. It's crazy when you say two years. I know, I mean, right? That is wild to think about. But thank you so much for having me. I'm honored by the introduction and I'm uh, excited to bring some value to the listeners today. So let's start. Let's start with the, the big question. Why, why should someone listening start a podcast? Someone listening should start a podcast if they have something that they're passionate about, that they're willing to work on over a long period of time before they may see what they think as success, right? I think one of the biggest questions I had to ask myself when I was starting out was, one, what is the value I'm going to bring? Two, how do I tie my passion into this? And three, am I willing to play the long game? Because even if you're passionate about something, that doesn't mean that it's not going to take hard work, effort, and the things on the back end. And that doesn't mean that it's not going to be a time commitment for you before you start seeing dividends, before you start seeing if people are actually listening, hearing. So make sure that if you start a podcast, that it's something that you really believe in and that you're willing to be patient with and put a lot of work into. So what, what was your number one? You know, what, what was the reason? What was the itch that you had to scratch? Absolutely. So for me, I had this moment of clarity per se, where I had a great job. I was making good money, but I knew that there was something more, right? And I knew I wanted to have ownership, not only of my life, but of my legacy and what I wanted to leave behind. I talk a lot about the dash, right? So whenever you were born and then dash and the day that you die, we're all going to die. And the moment that we realize that, is the moment that we can actually start living. So I was thinking about the dash. What is my dash going to be? It's more than just medical device sales or you know what I was doing at the time. And I was traveling a lot and getting so much value from these podcasts. And I was like, man, this is something I could do. This is something I could be passionate about. I think we all have innate gifts and things that we've been blessed with. And for me, speaking and, uh, you know, leadership. And I think being able to speak to a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds was something that I felt like I had a calling to towards. And for a long time, Sean, I, you know, was the jock was the guy that liked to party was the guy that got the girls and all the things that came with that, right. And, and you almost create this identity within that, right. And, and that was always my identity. But when that was taken away from me after college and I no longer had sports uh, to lean into, I kind of had this moment of realization of like, wow, what are you going to do? And how are you actually going to use these gifts for positive things, for good things? How are you going to use your influence and your pull to be able to leave this world behind better than when you got there? So for me, that was really the why. And I remember listening to a Tim Ferriss podcast, and it was specifically on Tim, Fer Tim Ferriss has launched a lot of podcasts. Including yes, he has. Yes. Yeah, it was specifically on you want to start a podcast. Here's what you need to know kind of thing. Amazing. And he was like, don't do it unless you're willing to put your head down for a year <laughs> and not see any results. A year? <laughs> About five years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was like. But that even a year for someone to be like, I'm going to put all this time, effort yep. and work. And, you know, I don't know what the total number of graveyard podcasts there are out there, but it's it's a big percentage. You know, it's oh, for sure. Non-active, non-active non podcasts for sure. 
Yeah, because it is such a time commitment. And the way that I approached it was, hey, this is going to bring value to the people that are listening, but also I'm going to be able to learn how to build an online presence, be able to learn digital hospitality, right? How do I reach out to people? How do I, uh, you know, curate connections like we've made over the years? And so then I'm like, okay, even if this doesn't touch the amount of people I hope it touches, I'm going to have ROI in this. Even if I don't monetize this, there is ROI for me here in my growth, in my walk that I'm, I, that I'm doing right now and where I see myself. Like, this is going to help me become a better person. And ultimately, that was my call to pull the trigger on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that people listening to this podcast, we're, we're so lucky that, you know, for five years, we've been cultivating an audience, people that support this show, support our work, um, engage with us on all these different social platforms. But I hope what you get from what Mason is talking about is what we like to call deep social. So, you know, really digital hospitality is how do you make a connection online that eventually will become an in real life forever friendship, you know, and for me, I'm lucky that I get asked to go on lots of different podcasts. And I've been doing that for, you know, the last five years, but there's certain guests, there's certain hosts that have me on where you feel that connection. And I feel that connection with you, the time that we had together, you know, the episode that I was on, I knew immediately, dude, Mason's my brother. Like this guy has my DNA. This is my walk of life. This is why we put on the show that we put on because we have the same DNA. And there's so many different people on this earth that because of the internet, you get that access. Uh, what kind of realization have you had, not just with the guests that you've had on, but the listeners that are listening to your shows? Yeah, that's a great point. You know, one concept that I'm really very interested in, especially coming from an athletic background is flow. And, and it's that thing that I had in the game, right? It's, it's the thing where you put the blinders on and everything else falls away. All the worries, all the struggles that you're dealing with. Once you cross the line, it's gone, right? And there's one singular focus. And how hard is that, right? Attention is the most precious thing in today's day and age. Attention is money. Attention is time. Everything comes down to attention. Everything we do. So this idea of flow, where else could I get that from? And like you said, when you have a connection with someone online and in this long term forum, it's a lot easier to connect like yep. that. But when you have a connection with someone like that, like you said, you can feel it and you can know that, hey, this person thinks like me, this person moves like me. This is someone I want to continue to have a relationship with because, Sean, I know if you called me for a favor, I would do it for you just as if I called you for a favor. So those are things that, you know, I think that's where the spirit part ties in for me personally. Yep. I think it's very interesting with technology today that we can create those kind of connections when you're in California and I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, right? Yep. So, I mean, it's, it's very interesting. And back to the flow piece, when I have a good conversation with somebody like that, I'm instantly in flow. When there's a podcast guest on, or I have a podcast guest come on, we are locked into each other and nothing else matters. And you come out of that hour or whatever it was, and you are energized. Yeah. You know, it's, I can't tell you the amount of times I've, you know, sat down and said, oh, I'm so tired. It's the end of the day. I don't know if I want to have this guest on right now. Like, even with your passion, you're going to have these days. There's not always going to be that yeah. motivation there, but almost every single time I step away from it, I'm like, wow, I'm energized. I feel amazing. Me and this person on the other end just shared so much with each other. And what we did in an hour stripped down raw, having real conversation is what some people take years to establish in their friendships. And so, you know, that I think is another layer of the podcast. It's to be able to have the tough conversations, the real conversations and be vulnerable in the way that we're feeling, talking, the way that we're handling business and relationships, health, and be able to put that out there for the world to see. Yeah, so I'm gonna share something with the audience. Uh, I'm gonna get real. I'm gonna tell on myself and tell on the team. Uh, you know, we've been publishing this podcast. It started as Behind the Smoke in 2017, 100 episodes we published, and then we transformed it, Stover and myself, into digital hospitality. And we've been putting on a weekly podcast since then. 
But we also, at the beginning of this year, launched our second podcast called Restaurant Influencers with Entrepreneur and Yelp, uh, which has been an incredible passion project. We're able to dive deeper into hospitality and restaurants and really you know, showcase a lot of the things that we talk about on this show, but more specifically into the restaurant business. But because of all that, we've gotten to a point where for the last six weeks, we haven't published a digital hospitality episode. And one of the things that I always talk about to our audience, to people on social, when we have cl clubhouse rooms, content we put out online is the power of consistency, you know, mm -hmm. being in that flow, understanding that no matter what our pillar content was going to be the podcast once a week, mm -hmm. you know, and we're working on getting back to that because now we're doing two pieces, you know, it's like now Stover has double the work. It's not like we added double the team, but now we have to do, but it's how do we become more efficient and still prioritize what we know that we need to do to continue to connect with our audience and continue to grow? Um, what kind of challenges have you had with your show about being consistent and why is being consistent so important? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's a huge piece of it. Um, and I, I go back and forth with this idea because you want to be consistent but you don't want to be putting out content just for the sake of putting out content, right? You need to make sure that the message you're bringing is something that you want people to hear. If, if, if you're putting out some BS content just for the sake of saying, Hey, I didn't miss a week. You're missing the point here. Right. Yep. And I think what that is doing for me, at least was playing it ahead, you know, planning in sprints. So doing a week where I have 10 podcasts in there, now I have 10 weeks of content or five weeks of content, however I want to break it down. And then also being able to pivot and make adjustments and be flexible. If I don't have a specific guest where I think eh, this podcast might not be ready, or maybe we need to run this back. I don't like this here or there. I need to do some tweaks then, Hey, I'm going to do a solo podcast today and I'm going to make an adjustment. I had a guy on by the name of Tom Boyd who is in Huge the digital fan. great dude. dude that guy's I, I i it's funny i saw i follow him on tiktok and yeah. then i saw that you had him on the show and i was like fucking egg mason look at you book it booking the guests that i would that was a, that's a digital hospitality guest dude he that is guy's phenomenal i love I, I love his i love his his message and his vibe yeah i can definitely hook you guys up he's yeah, a great sure. dude awesome story um but one of his things that i really took home from our podcast was creative constructs the idea of creative construct. So as creatives, I know I can speak for myself here. My ideas are always bouncing around, right? And sometimes your ideas come in and out and you don't grab them quick enough before they're out and a new idea comes in. So to be able to create a creative construct for breathing air every Wednesday, this is a non-negotiable. This is going to yep. happen every Wednesday. Yep. It creates that lane for you to really focus on the art of the creation and what your message is and not have to worry about, should I post on Monday? Should I post on Friday? No, these are the non-negotiables that you're creating. And even in content creation, if you take the sprint aspect of it, hey, I'm going to do 10 reels or 10 TikToks that are focused on, you know, mindset. And I'm going to, you know, make sure that they're edited this way. And I'm going to sit in the same place. and I'm going to wear the same thing. And I'm going to have 10 of them. And I'm going to throw them out there, whatever my cadence is. I'm going to see what the results are. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, okay, the guests really like this piece or the people really like this piece, kind of look at that sample size, be able to come back and then create another creative construct where, Hey, my next 10 videos are going to be about fitness or my next 10 videos are going to be about barbecue or media. So to be able to put that creative construct on yourself actually frees you up to be able to be more creative within the art itself. It's almost like the discipline equals freedom piece to me. Yeah. So back to telling on ourselves, have you, <laughs> have you been consistent in your pursuit and your non-negotiable? Cause I mean, the, one of the things that I, I love talking when, when you and I first talked, we were talking about Kobe Bryant and the Mamba mentality and, yeah. you know, the consistent, persistent pursuit of being better every single day, but also understanding that sometimes we fail. Sometimes, oh, yeah. you know, those non-negotiables for whatever reason, life happens and the seasonality of life and understanding you can't beat yourself up. It's how quick do you get back on? How quick do you get back up? Where yeah. have you failed? I've definitely, there's been Wednesdays where I haven't, 
I think I can pat myself on the back and say there's not been a lot since I started. Yes. But has there been zero? No. Um, I think what you said there is, is huge, right? If life happens, don't beat yourself up about it. There is two ways to be able to react to that uh, and respond to that to failure. And it's either to let it dig you deeper into the hole or it's to be able to give you a fire and light a fire under you to be able to be better and know that that's not going to happen and plan accordingly for the future. Um, I think that happens with a lot of things. You know, we look at emotions like fear and like regret and shame and all these things that can come with failing as negative. But to me, they can be some of the most powerful emotions that you have if you use them correctly, right? And just like momentum can take you to the top of the mountain, momentum can also take you to the bottom of the mountain. It's how you use that emotion that you're feeling at the current time, knowing that it is a temporary emotion, but that you can utilize it based on your perspective at that time frame. So if I'm some of the most strong and powerful emotions that we have are sometimes the ones that are looked at as negative. Yep. It's just where are you channeling that energy? Everything is energy, right? And so if I fail and I miss a podcast and I'm down on myself, I'm going to say, okay, instead of going and wallowing in self-pity, how can I use this anger that I'm feeling right now at myself because I broke my non-negotiable with myself? How can I use this to drive me forward to be so much better in the future to you know, lean into these changes and challenges that I need to make so that I continue to level up? It is interesting because the non-negotiables that people that listen to this podcast, people like you and me, people that have our DNA that always want to be better, that hold ourselves to a higher standard, those non-negotiables are, are with ourselves. <laughs> so really, there's no one to hold us accountable to those non-negotiables, which is why community is so powerful, which is why we believe in smartphone storytelling, you know, letting people know hey, this is my sunrise gratitude practice. I don't need to post every single time I go out and go on a walk or go on a run or go on a hike and the sunrise comes up, but I do. And then when I don't, people are like, hey, are you okay? Hey, are yeah. you there? Sean, you good? <laughs> Just checking in, are you good? But that's that level of holding myself accountable, it goes back to a lot of the insecurities I had when I first started posting content. It was like, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Why does anybody give a shit if I go outside on a hike? Like that's, you know, it's, oh, look at me. I went on a hike. Well, no, the unlock is that I'm holding myself accountable, but it's also sometimes inspirational to one person, hmm. not to hundreds, not to thousands, not to millions. I just talking about one fucking person like, dude, thank you. And you wouldn't believe like the amount of DMS that I get from people that are like, I had no idea this person was even following me. Hmm. I had no idea how they even found me. But they found me and they said, dude, thank you for posting about the sunrise. What, what kind of practices do you have that you post about that you are hesitant to post about? That's a great question. Um, I think about whenever you're really stripping down and being vulnerable with things that are going on in your life, uh, especially for men, I could speak for men because I'm a man. I know that sometimes those conversations are hard to have, right? Yeah. And Whenever I see other men doing that, and whenever I try and do that for myself and be authentic with the audience, because that's really what they want to see, like no one wants the fluff, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's the hardest, but it's also the most rewarding. And that's a lot of life, right? Uh, usually the hardest challenges that we have pay the most dividends in the back end. Um, and so anyone that feels at this moment that they have a calling or they, have this feeling in their gut that like, man, I should do this, or I should have this conversation, or I should be more vocal about this. And, and maybe someone else is feeling this way. You're not alone. There's a lot of people, not with the exact situation as you, but that have felt something that is very similar and can relate to what you're going through at this point. And to be able to help somebody go through something and be better after you felt the pain of that, is one of the best feelings ever. Like you said, when someone reaches out to me and says, man, this really helped, it makes everything worth it, right? It's the best feeling you can get in the entire world because you're no longer focused internally 
And, and so much we focus internally on, you know, me, 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 me. And, and it's such an instant gratification world. And we can get caught and sucked into that. And it's important to take a step back and realize that for me, the most gratifying things have not been any of the accomplishments, but have been the people that have come to me and said, you really made a difference here, or you really made a difference, or thanks for saying this, or thanks for doing this. Um, because that's what it's all about, right? That is the dash. That is knowing that you left the world better than when you came. So I'm going to do an exercise with you. How old are you, Mason? 26. Fuck, you're so young. 26 and you're already doing all kinds of incredible things that's incredible i'm uh, i'm i'm always inspired by people that are that are way younger than i am um doing the things that you're doing because you get it like i said you're playing the game within the game so we're going to do an exercise and i'm going to put you on a two-minute drill i want you to Ooh. give me give me the dash who is mason and what is your dash right now like you what you've lived up to today what is your dash what have you done in two minutes who are you? Who is Mason? Mason is someone who is trying to help young adults optimize their life through enhancing their body, mind, and spirit. Give me more. Don't you have got to use the whole two minutes. Right, seconds. Yeah, two yeah, minutes I, I, I teach, I, we teach this to, to anyone listening to this podcast. Everyone needs an elevator pitch. One yeah, this is thing, one of the worst things you can do on the elevator is not use up the time. We're still going up the floor. Yeah, this, this is awesome. Time. Okay, let's go. Okay. Mason is someone who, you know, has been through trials. I've had physical trials. I've torn two ACLs. Um, I have been, you know, a leader of a large group of men, all different backgrounds coming together for a common goal. Um, you know, I've blood, sweat, and tears with those guys on the physical field and also had the intimate conversations outside of that. Mason is someone who is not afraid to take chances, not afraid to take risks, not afraid to jump into the unknown um, because I know what's on the back end of it. And that's something I have to constantly remind myself as well. Mason is someone who enjoys authentic conversation, real conversation, no bullshit, um, stuff that hits you in the heart and, and really allows you to live and speak from love because love is the most important thing that we have on this earth. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And Mason is someone who, wants to continue to grow every single day, who's hard on himself, um, who fails all the time, uh, but who tries to learn from those failures and become better for them. What's my time? That was good. That was, you were, you were just under two minutes. Okay. So that now you're tough. I like that. So your next, your next drill, yeah. since we're talking about the dash, okay. I'm a huge fan of Donald Miller. Donald Miller wrote um, story brand, how to build a story brand. He also wrote the, a book called uh, Hero on a Mission. And in the book, Hero on a Mission, he talks about writing your obituary, mm. writing your obituary and saying it every single day and updating that obituary as you live life, because it makes you, forces you to think backwards, you know, to reverse engineer what, what have you accomplished and what do you want to accomplish? Um, so I'm going to give you your chance to, to say your obituary. This is the first time too for the digital Holy hospitality. Shit. I'm just putting you on the spot. I'm just putting you fully on blast. <laughs> this is, it's good stuff though. Okay. My obituary. What are you going to be remembered for? Mason was a loving son, brother, husband, and father. He left everybody that he came in contact with better than before they met them him um man if we could just do that then i'm happy then to be happy. honest to be honest i'm happy and, and that's the concept of death i think about a lot but if i could say that you know obviously i want to be financially free and i have those kind of goals but when you ask it in that way it's really interesting what comes to mind and it is the people that I come in contact with, how I left them feeling when they're done with me and I'm done with this world yep. and my family um, and the legacy that I leave behind with my kids, my wife and my family. I think that's that's top of mind for me. Yeah, I think, you know, my grandfather was such an important figure in my life and he was able to do incredible things. having been born on a village in Bulgaria and 
you know, learning German in order to study medicine in World War II, but he, he created this incredible life for us and our entire family here in San Diego. Yet, when I think about what did he give me, it has nothing to do with the financial aspects of, of any of it. It has to do with the gifts of curiosity, of getting involved, of asking for help, it has to do with all of these principles of how to be a great grandfather, you know, how to be an incredible grandfather, how to teach somebody, my kids, why is it so important to continue to ask why, to continue mm. to drive yourself with curiosity. For you, why was breathing air? What is breathing air? How did you come to name your podcast breathing air? And that's so breathing a, without the without the G. That's without the G, and it's an apostrophe, right? So that's, that's right. Uh, there's the branding. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually a funny story. So I used to write uh, songs when I was in college, um, and one of the songs that I wrote, I said, "It's Arkansas." 95 i'm breathing air for the first time that's when i was born and i was talking to my best friend who was my roommate in college said hey man this is the idea i really want to start a podcast what should i name it and he's like dude breathe in air i'm like what do you mean he's like you said breathe in air you said it it's your line and so that was the original kind of birth of that idea. But then I took it and I said, okay, what is breathing air? I just broke it down to, yes, it's something that we have to do to survive, right? It's something that we do every single day. And there's habits and subconscious patterns and thoughts that we have every single day. Um, and this is where the tagline everyday action, extraordinary mindset came because you can take in all of the you know, mindset tips, you can read all the books, you can do all the things that you want to do. But it doesn't matter if you don't have the everyday action piece, right? There's a reason why that's before extraordinary mindset, because everything in between doesn't matter. And you can be the smartest person in the world and, and have no results if you don't put the action in. So that was kind of where the tagline came. And then another piece of it was I was extremely into uh, breath work into biohacking and figuring out how to optimize this carcass that we have to, you know, utilize our biology to be able to be the best selves that we can. And breathing has been one of those big pieces for me. Um, it's led me into meditation to a sense. It's led me into better physical performance. It's led me into, you know, stress optimization, stress, like being able to react to certain situations better than I was before. Um, and if you think about it, we can live without water, we can live without food for X amount of days, right? Food longer than water, water. And then what's last air. We, that's the least out of all those. You take air away from us. I mean, we're, we're, we're done quicker than anything else that we can think of. So it kind of all came together there. And I can tell you that that wasn't the initial thought at the beginning. This is something that has kind of continued to grow, continued to mold. As I've grown, the show has grown with me. And I always think and always say this as well, is that the show is part of my DNA now, right? It is something that's ever growing and changing with me. And each person that comes on the show is intertwining their DNA with it as well. And when that happens and great people and great conversations and minds come together, things evolve. And so it's been really cool to see what the last two years has done for me and for the show and for everybody else that's listened and got to grow with me. What are your goals for the show? My goals for the show Big are audacious goals. Yeah. Yeah. Impact a million people. That's the goal for me. Right. And, and, and that's something that I hope however long it takes from now, I can say 10 million, 100 million, right? Kanye West, say what you want about him. Um, <laughs> he, his lyric just popped into my head, right? Shoot for the stars. And if you fall, you land on a cloud. So yep. I think it's important to set lofty goals, like set goals. You know, Grant Cardone says 10x, right? So set those huge goals, those big goals that you're going to do all the things that you think can get to that huge goal. And then if for some reason you have speed bumps, guess what? You're still going to be successful because 
in that middle ground, you were putting in the action to get to that huge goal. So million people impact a million people to help change their habits and to change their life. And the other thing would be to eventually be able to monetize the show where all I have to do is focus on this. I think mm -hmm. it's my true calling um, at the end of the day. So I love what I do now. I'm thankful for what I do now, but almost everything I look at is how can this help progress me in one way or another? If you're working a job right now and you know you want to do something else, how is that job that you're working right now helping you progress in other areas of life, you know, whether it's sales, marketing, how can you use those skills that you're cultivating in that job to do the end goal, right? And we hear a lot of people say side hustle or this or that. And how are those, how like every day we work a lot, right? It's part of our lives. So to be able to have the mindset of, hey, this job is important to me and it's pushing me towards where I need to get you will give so much more to that job, to that company, and you will have more success instead of thinking, oh, I wish I was doing something else. I wish I was doing my passion project or I wish I was doing this, right? So I think that's once again, all about mindset and perception and perspective drives performance. And so you have control of your perspective of life. And, and that's always one of the things that I'd like to say is control the controllables. And, yeah. and I think that's controllable. I think one of the most important things for us when we started was really, we had to learn how to do marketing and branding for our own business. That was digital marketing. And once we started podcasting, once we started interviewing other people that we were interested in, that's when we truly became a media company. It's where our skill set forced us to really learn what digital media, what publishing on the internet really was. It's one thing to publish on Facebook. It's another thing to send out a tweet, create a TikTok video. It's another thing once you're publishing for multiple, you're publishing on an RSS feed that sends it to other feeds and you're creating show notes and you're figuring out how do I book the guest? How do I make the guest look in their best light? How do I ask the right questions? How do I improve the craft, the craft of audio storytelling, including the video? Hmm. You know, how, how do you look at the craft of podcasting? How do you try to get better? For anyone listening to this that has thoughts of wanting to start a podcast, the number one thing is audio to me, the audio quality, like think about how you're listening to a show. Usually if it's bad quality, people aren't going to listen to it that much longer, even if it's, you know, great content. So make sure that you have those things in place. It's funny. There's a lot of people that reach out to me that want to start podcasts. And I think this is important for them to hear. Um, the other piece is how can you take your ideas and redistribute them throughout the said social media platforms through emails? How can you take and utilize your time efficiently to take an idea and then be able to reproduce it with minimal effort on the back end, right? Because you want to be able to focus on the art and then be able to push that at as many platforms as possible. So if you're making reels, think about it. You got real videos, you have TikToks, you have YouTube uh, shorts, all right, you're seeing this huge push towards shorts. So that should be a huge focus for anyone creating content right now. Can't tell you how crazy the numbers are for new, new uh, account engagement is on Instagram or on TikTok for people who are creating shorts, right? That's back to the attention thing. We have short attention spans now. So people are yep. short shorts, right? So master that. And you kind of have three categories there that you can really pour that into. And then you have, you know, your longer form with audio and then YouTube as well. But you can also cut YouTube. So, so you have one long clip. You can also cut Joe Rogan does a great job of this five minute clips, six minute clips, 10 minute clips, boom, boom, boom. You're getting more eyes, more eyes. They hear something that draws them in. Guess what? They might go listen to it on their jog instead of watching it, or they might listen to it in the car, but it started with them finding you and seeing you Correct. and hearing you. So to be able to distribute an idea and email marketing is one too. email creating a, a email list, you know, having people that are bought in to what you're doing. And I will say this for brand loyalty, for customer loyalty down the road, for people to really buy in and believe in you. If someone listens to a couple of podcast episodes, they're going to know so much more about you and connect with you so much deeper than if they scroll through every single one of your Instagram pictures. Yep. <laughs> so 
there's another piece of it. If someone takes an hour out of their day to listen to something that you have to say in the way that you think and the way that you view the world, you're going to create loyal people to your brand and to what you push and ultimately to you. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's great, great advice. And I, it's part of that deep social. It's part of that audio storytelling and having great audio. One, it's yeah. a shout out to Greg Rempe, who's my, my podcast and audio mentor. He's the one that will give me shit for having bad sounding audio <laughs> to the podcast and go, what the fuck happened to you? We need to fix your studio. We need to fix the mic. I've got all these, these things. He did a whole audio intervention with him and Sam, the cooking guy, but nonetheless, you you've got to have people in your life that will call you out. Um, especially in your craft. You know, one of the things my media mentor, David Meltzer teaches me is that you have to be willing to ask for help. And if there's people that have been there and done that, they're willing to help you along the way. And I know that anyone that reaches out to you, I guarantee you, you're probably responding to them saying, hey, this is what I did. This is how I failed. This is what I, I succeeded. You know, you can go to Google. I mean, that's the beautiful world we live in. You can go to right. Google, you can go to YouTube, you can find podcasts about this stuff, but just ask the question, you know, but more importantly than ask the question, I think is having the big idea, you want to start a podcast, that's phenomenal. We highly encourage it. But what are the work that you're going to commit to do on a daily basis on a weekly basis to produce said podcast? Because for us, we're podcasters for life, you can call it podcasting, you can call it audio storytelling, I will continue whatever this looks like if it's over zoom, if it's over some app that we don't know what exists. But nonetheless, I will continue to ask questions. I will continue to com create community. I'll continue to try to do things to go back to what you said. It's, it's in your DNA. Breathe in air is who you are. And it's an extension of who you are. And the people that you have in the show are part of your story. And the yeah. people that you bring into your community are part of your story. For you, what, um, what kind of parting words of wisdom do you have for any, anybody that's listening to the, to the show? Lean into change, lean into your failures, lean into things that are uncomfortable. Um, remind yourself that, you know, life is short. I'll be vulnerable here. My dad had a heart attack um, a couple weeks ago. I was sitting in this chair. I got a call from my mom. And, you know, that wave of emotion that comes over you at that point is you know, anybody listening that's been through this knows or has lost someone that's close to them. But, you know, thankfully, my dad is still here. But all things, you know, considered, he shouldn't be. Um, so that's a wake up call, right? And, and what I think we often forget is that life is precious. Life is short. Um, it's fleeting. You know, we do have time, but we don't right? You don't have enough. It, I juggle with that a lot. Like, yes, we do have time, but no, we don't like this is this present moment is so important. Um, and we often take it for granted, myself included. So if you have something that you're passionate about, if you have something that you want to do, if you have something that you've been sitting on, and that it keeps pulling to you, and you keep pushing it aside and pushing it down, oh, I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later. Stop doing that you know, cut that shit out because there is no better time than now for you to start. And it doesn't matter if you're a novice, you know, I've seen people blow up overnight. It happens all the time. Like think about the crazy things that have happened. I saw your video in about 2007 when the iPhone came out. Right. And so it's like, dude, what? That is so it's not that long ago yesterday. Yeah. Um, not and that look long at, ago. yeah, look at all the lives that it's changed. Like, look, at how many people have created careers around what they love to do because of this new invention. And now look what COVID's done even more into the, you know, what was happening with this technological advancements has now been skyrocketed to the max, right? There's this new revolution of, you know, hybrid workforce. And there's this new revolution of being able to reach so many people off of these phones that we have, right? And it's an incredible tool. You just have to use it and don't let it use you. And 
that's probably one of the biggest things too, when it comes to social media, to um, these tools that are so powerful, they can work against you just as much as they can work for you. So focus on taking that passion, taking that purpose, combining it to something that brings value to people. And you can build a business around that, right? So passion, purpose, it brings value, bring it together and put out your truth, right? Put out your truth, use the tools that we have been given and don't let them use you. Mason, I can't wait for the day where you're full-time podcasting, content creating, um, creating your own life for yourself. I know that no matter what you do, we'll have this evergreen content so we can look back and look at your two minute drill and go, remember Mason, when you were, when you, when you were dropping the two minute drill, um, on the digital hospitality podcast, but, uh, we, we are on clubhouse every single week on Wednesdays and on Fridays at 10 AM uh, Pacific time. So if you're listening to this podcast, please join us there. It's an easy way that you can come on stage, share your story. I'll put you on the test and make you do a two minute drill. So you can tell me who you are and why you listen to the podcast and call me out on any of my bullshit. But yeah, we love Clubhouse because it it brings the podcasting, the audio world to life. Um, we will have Mason on when his episode drops so that you guys can ask him questions about Breathing Air podcast and everything that he's up to. You can find him at Breathin, B-R-E-A-T-H-I-N, Air, A-I-R-P-O-D on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. And uh, Mason's also on LinkedIn. So we'll put all those links into the show notes. Um, any, any Anything else you want to add, Mason? I just appreciate you having me on. It's always a great conversation. And, um, you know, I cherish you and what you're doing. And I hope everybody got some value from this. Uh, feel free for anyone listening that has questions or, you know, just wants to chat to reach out to me. Um, I always answer my DMs when I can. So more Perfect. than happy to talk. Yeah. And you guys know how to find me. It's at Sean P. Walchef, all the platforms. Uh, we are grateful that you guys listen to the show. We look forward to seeing you on Clubhouse and we will catch you next week. Stay curious, get involved, and don't be afraid to ask for help.